good evening everyone and good afternoon to my friend from jordan and good morning to my colleagues from uk so a uh, warm welcome to this uh, today's cme lung cancer from controversy to consensus i am dr animesh shah i am a clinical oncologist working in apollo kolkata so we know according to globocon data 2020 lung cancer is the second most common cancer with an incidence of 11.4 percent just after breast cancer and with a incident with a mortality of 18 percent which is the commonest cause of cancer related death in 2020 there are about 2.2 million new lung cancer cases worldwide with 1.8 million death so on the contrary it is a cancer where we have seen tremendous improvement in treatment and outcomes for the last decade or so whether it's a systemic treatment novel agent immunotherapy or modern radiotherapy obviously there are controversial issues and we are here today uh, with all our colleagues from uh, all over india and uk who are going to join hands together and try to sort out the controversies and try to come to a consensus on behalf of the organizing team i am glad to thank all the faculties all the support uh, scientific advisor the delegates the organizing team of kavina creation and our sponsors dr reddy's lab rosh and sipla for sponsoring the event so without wasting any further time let us crack on with our first session our first speaker for the webinar is dr rajathor uh rajathor is a consultant pulmonologist and director and head of department of pulmonology tk birla group of hospital he is a director of training and education initiative of indian chest society is also the director of training research uh, national allergy and asthma bronchitis institute kolkata uh thank you rajada for joining us and over to you thank you very much animesh uh, uh, warm congratulations again to dr animesh saha and dr pradeep mandal for coming up with this initiative dr parikh thank you for these for the kind words that you had for me it's been an honor to meet you whenever i have met you and it's it gives me great pleasure to meet you after the pandemic i am trying to share my screen uh, what i have been asked to do today is to give a talk on screening for lung cancer and i just need to yeah sort it so what i'm going to do over the next 17 odd minutes is to give you a brief about where we stand with lung cancer screening today and i will conclude with my impressions of where we stand today with lung cancer screening in india so that's what's in the ambit today those are the learning objectives that you hope to achieve out of this talk we will talk about the ct screening principles and the evidence that's available today we will talk about some of the non invasive diagnostic approaches and we'll also talk about something which is close to my heart there's a lot of procedures that we can do in pulmonology today and that's a great addition to our armamentarium but we also need to make sure that we don't go overboard in the use of these procedures and interventions and hence we'll discuss about how to minimize procedures i'll do my talk in the way of certain questions these will be rhetorical questions because this being a virtual meeting i cannot see all of you however do ask yourself these questions as i go along and i'll try and give you an evidence based answer to these questions so the first question that i pose to all of you and to myself is is 5 or 10 year survival a good measure of how effective screening interventions are because it means more people are getting cured you would say this is common sense if the 5 to 10 year survival is good it means we are doing well with our screening interventions so let's see what the evidence shows so if you look at the randomized controlled trials from the 1970s and i have listed some of the rcts that were done during the time it would show that either chest x ray or sputum cytology or a combination of these two interventions in male smokers above the age of 45 years seem to increase the yield the positive yield the diagnosis of lung cancer by about 20% so 5 year survival would improve from 
so from 15% so to 35%, which would be a 20% increase in survival. So four trials, you would feel that the five-year survival is improved. However, if you look at this meta-analysis in the forest plot therein, you would find that these studies and a few others done during this time period does not really show an improvement in mortality. What's the reason then? And the reason lies in the three biases that I'm going to talk about in the next couple of minutes. The first of them, the one which probably comes to common sense first, is about lead time bias. So think of this scenario where you've got five patients which are um, enumerated by the circles that you see on there. These patients are followed, uh, these patients get symptoms. So there's one patient out of these who develop symptoms. The symptoms lead to a diagnosis of lung cancer. And then with or without treatment, the disease goes to its natural course and the patient dies. So this is the control group, the group which has not been subjected to screening. Now you have a second group where you do screening. So same five patients, you've now screened these individuals for lung cancer. There's no question of symptoms because you've caught them early. So the diagnosis is confirmed early. However, the patient then dies at the same time frame. If you think about survival time in the control group, the survival time is from diagnosis confirmed to patient dies, which is a shorter period of time as compared to confirmation of diagnosis to patient dying in the screen group. However, you understand that this is an artificial increase in survival time because the survival time looks artificially longer because you've diagnosed the patient early because you screened this group. So five, the five-year survival is biased here because of lead time bias. And the lead time is as you see on that particular screen. The next bias I'm going to talk about is length time bias. So length time bias is based on the fact that you have tumors of various grades. You have aggressive tumors, and then you have indolent tumors. The more aggressive the tumor, the more early detectable the patient is, and the earlier is the onset of symptoms in these individuals. The more indolent the tumor, the greater the amount of time before detection and for the onset of symptoms. So hold that thought and then see what shows up on length time bias. So if you screen patients at one year intervals, so if you see patients at year one and then at year two, it's the patients who have indolent tumors who would get caught in the one to two year time period. So that's the time span in which you would get the less aggressive tumors. The more aggressive ones would follow, fall on the left of that curve, on the left of that graph in, that you see in front of you and would actually reach the screening period. Hence, you get a false impression that patients are surviving longer because of the indolent or less aggressive nature of the disease which leads to the length time bias that I spoke about. And see these two lines there, those are the tumors that you're catching. These are the less aggressive or the indolent ones, which results in length time bias. The third bias is about overdiagnosis bias. So in patients who are getting screened, so the top group on there, you see that on my cursor on there, you are screening these individuals. Diagnosis happens in all the three individuals who are being screened and have lung cancer one of these patients are dying, the remaining two are dying from natural causes, maybe from an MI, maybe from a COPD exacerbation, etc. However, all these patients are getting labeled as having deaths with lung cancer contributing to it. You see the other group, the one which is not being screened, and in this group, there's onset of symptoms, then a diagnosis, then death. The other two patients are not getting diagnosed because they're dying before diagnosis, from natural causes, which might be, like I said, an MI, a stroke, or a COPD exacerbation. So that's the overdiagnosis bias. So three different biases we spoke about. The first is the lead time bias. The second is the length time bias. And the third is the overdiagnosis bias. So does let's answer the next question, which is, does lung cancer screening work? 
So this is the lung cancer screening trial data, which is about more than 10 years dated now. And it compares low dose CT with chest radiology. You can see the absolute numbers in there. The number of lung cancer deaths, 346 versus 425. The lung cancer mortality per 100,000, again, smaller in the CT group as compared to what is in the chest X-ray group. And you have a p-value, which is significant. And compared between CT and chest X-ray, this seminal trial showed that you did improve survival. You would remove or reduce lung cancer mortality by using lung cancer screening. So not survival, but reduction of mortality by lung cancer screening. And you can see the number needed to treat there. So if you screened 320 people, you would prevent one lung cancer death. Now, let's try and answer this next question. And I want you to pick your brains again before I um, give you the answer. All-cause mortality is reduced in breast, colorectal, and lung cancer. Do you think that's the correct statement? Or do you think that's an incorrect statement? Now, keep in context that screening procedures, screening protocols are in place for breast and colorectal, which is why we are comparing it with lung cancer screening. So I would have loved to know what your thoughts are, but let me give you the answer. So what about lung cancer? So this is again the NLST trial, the National Lung Cancer Screening Trial data. And this shows a 6.7% reduction in all-cause mortality by doing CT as a screening modality, as opposed to doing chest X-rays. So 6.7% reduction, which is the P of 0 0.02. Let's now compare this with the Cochrane Systematic Review for breast and colorectal, both with a 13-year follow-up. And I was amazed to see that the hazard ratio is close to one or one in both of these conditions. Hence, there is no reduction in all-cause mortality by screening of breast and colorectal cancer at 13 years. That's what shows up in the Cochrane Systematic Review. So this slide is not to pull down the screening procedures for breast cancer and colorectal, but just to say that there's a lot of justification in screening patients for lung cancer if you have appropriate tools and protocols in place. So NLST, why do we pull down NLST? Why is NLST thought to be not so convincing? So the people who designed, and this is from an editorial which came out with the NLST data, this was because the people who designed the National Lung Cancer Screening Trials actually did not believe that the trial would come back as being positive. They thought it would be a negative trial, which is why the screening got stopped after three rounds. So no follow-up after one year. Screening was across the board. It was everyone. And hence, even low-risk individuals got screened. There was over-referral for nodules to clinical teams. There was hence a lot of surgery, even for benign lesions. They did not use the best nodule evaluation techniques because nodule evaluation techniques have gradually evolved over a period of time, and there was no fixed workup strategy. Hence, the conclusion was from LRST that while it's very promising, while we thought this would be something that would work in the long term, it was also thought that there could be procedures which would make it better. And one of the subsequent trials which I'm quoting here is the Nelson trial. So this was not chest X-ray versus CT. This was screening with CT versus no screening at all. The screening was between 50 to 75 years. It was for smokers or ex-smokers within a span of 15 years of quitting. The CT was done at one, three, and five and a half years. So much longer period of follow-up was done. The numbers were smaller as compared to NLST, which about 15 and a half thousand people randomized and about 8,000 people in the screening arm. So that's Nelson. I'll come back to Nelson in a moment. But these are the various guidelines and protocols that have come out in the US. And I want you to look at a degree of commonality in the recommendations from the US, just to remind you guys that it's only in the US and in Canada that there are national screening programs for lung cancer. So you see the pattern, it's mainly above the age of 55 and below the age of 80, or ideally below the age of 75. There's a lot of pack years there is. The quit period should be less than 15 years across the board. And in other risk factors, 
they have looked they have not really looked at other risk factors i'll come back to other risk factors the interval of screening is a year across all the recommendations in the us one of the reasons why these lung cancer screening trials have been pulled down and this is especially relevant in india is that it was thought to have a lot of false positives so margaret mccartney who writes articles in the bmj on a regular basis had this quote most countries have hesitated to introduce lung cancer screening because of the eye wateringly high false positive tests and one of the proponents of uh, lung cancer screening in the uk david bolwin tells us no it isn't and let me show you why he says this so these are trials which came in after the Nas national lung cancer screening trial it includes nelson it includes the uk lung cancer screening study and for all of these you can see that the false positive rate is far lower as compared to nlst so with nlst it's about 23% with nelson with ukls you're talking about less than 5% this is why this is because nelson the uk lung cancer screening trial had an intermediate group so this intermediate group of people were followed up for shorter period of time because the ct appearance were akin to benign lesions hence they were followed up twice and then screening would stop and they would come out of the screening trial at that point of time and that i think is the way forward when you screen patients with lung cancer even in our country what are the implement uh, issues with implementation what are the challenges because of it implementation becomes a challenge all over europe cost effectiveness is proven to be the huge challenge selection criteria is difficult i showed you the selection criteria for the us i'll show you some more in a minute what radiological techniques to use the protocols for low dose ct scans to minimize the physical hazards the physical harms for radiation is important optimal mdg workup and a team which is used to doing lung cancer screen is extremely important how often or how infrequently you will screen these individuals is important to plug in a smoking cessation program is very very important and to get people to participate in lung cancer screening has also proven to be a huge challenge so those are the issues with implementation that one needs to think of so these are the risk prediction models that i spoke about and i want you to look at the model that i'm pointing out the tamemagi model this had a huge number of suspects however they were aimed at ever smokers aged between 55 to 74 a bmi which was essentially low patients with copd and emphysema a positive family history low levels of education and a personal history or a family history of cancer i want you to remember this because that's the thought that i want you to hold when we talk about screening in india for the last slide so large number of patients ever smokers 55 to 74 bmi being low copd emphysema positive family history personal history positive and low levels of education i'll touch on volumetry because of the lack of time so volumetry is looking at the volume of the tumor rather than the maximum diameter which we often use and even very small changes mean that the volume increases by about 25% hence when you look at nodule algorithms today a lot of them have replaced the diameter the size of the tumor by volume and that's what showed up that at discharge on ct surveillance make sure that we measure volume and an increase of volume by more than 25% is thought to be relevant in these individuals so let me skip a few slides very important to think about physical harms and i show you this slide which says one radiation cancer death for every 22 prevented so that's a significant number and that's why selection of patients is important so one radiation cancer death for every 22 prevented smoking cessation should be integrated if you put people into screening programs the number of people who quit smoking automatically increases and hence smoking cessation should be an important part of screening trials i'll finish off now with the approaches and how you go about following up these nodules so the diagnostic assessment of course includes the investigation the doctor looking at the patient doing spirometry lung function tests and fitness assessment you would do a ct of uh, extending from the neck up to the pelvis for staging of the disease and then have a discussion with informed consenting of the procedures that you're going to do and we said that you uh, do the minimum diagnostic procedures 
to get the staging information. And then there's a lot of focus on this slide on PET CT in trying to identify whether these nodules light up and need further follow up and screening. The invasive diagnostic tools in pulmonology like TBNA, EUS TBNA, or EBUS TBNA, FNA of the neck nodes based on ultrasound, et cetera, are investigations that you might want to do in diagnosing this condition. So let me finish off with my take on the application in Indian scenario. So in my understanding, because of the biomass hazard, because of a younger COPD population in our country, because of air pollution, the screening in India should be at a lower age. And I think somewhere between 40 to 50 would be an appropriate age to start off. COPD, a personal or family history of cancer, et cetera, are important tools that you include in the screening studies. You try and minimize false positive. We talked about having an in intermediate group. In India, this is likely to be a large group. These will need to be followed up for one or two years. However, there would be a large number of lesions which look essentially benign, and we need to have an algorithm which integrates the intermediate group rather than all these nodules being followed up on a long-term basis. We talked about trying to minimize procedures, choosing the least invasive uh, approach is important, and there are new techniques which are applicable in select few. However, you need to have tertiary care centers to refer these patients onto so that the best care is available in following up the nodules that you think are essential to follow up. I'll stop there. I think I might have exceeded time by a couple of minutes. And I want to thank the organizing team again and thank everyone on behalf of the Indian Chess Society for having involved us in this great meeting. Thank you, Animation Pradeep. Thank you. Thank you, Rajada. I think we've got a couple of comments from Dr. Purvish Parikh. Uh, one of the comments is all cause mortality in any screening trial always there up for controversy. Throws up. Uh, the way events are censored can allow statistical jugglery and confuse us of we are not careful to read the supplementary data. Any, any, any comments on that, Rajata? So uh, absolutely, Animesh, so couldn't uh, agree more with uh, Dr. Parikh. I think that's how they found out about these biases when they looked at the meta-analysis of the four trials that happened between 1970s and 2000. And that led to the discovery of these different uh, biases that I talked about. And I guess statistical jugglery is something which is close to the heart of researchers and numbers can be twisted to suit needs, that's for sure. But I think it's important to understand that going forward, we will need to find out a rational way in which we operate the lung cancer screening program in India. There should be a choice in our country because there's both private and public health care. But I think we need to find out a way in which we screen patients. And there, looking at the data, I think would be based on mortality data rather than looking at survival data. I think uh, many of the private hospitals are coming up with this uh, screening packages. But I think from the government perspective also, we need to take initiative that uh, this is something, uh, uh, it's an urgent need or unmet need that needs to be addressed, isn't it? So, so we are in the middle of, uh, from the Indian Chess Society, we're in the middle of coming up with a white paper. You've got some people from the government who are associated with it. So this will be a sort of a pilot where we offer lung cancer screening to the population that we spoke about a little while ago. And it will be a small number of people and we'll see how it works. But uh, I think we have a long way to go before we can lay out a comprehensive lung cancer screening trial, a lung cancer screening program in India. But it's definitely the need of the hour for sure. Very good. Very informative. Thank you, Rajada, for the elaborate talk. <laughs>